sailing away. Set an open course for the virgin sea. And I've got to be free. Free to face a life that's ahead of me. Ah! On board, I'm the captain. <laughs> so climb aboard. We'll sail to tomorrow on every shore. And I'll try best that I can to care. I can't sing those high notes unless I he's, sing it loud. <laughs> yeah. To carry on, to say good morning to, always learning. Well, push you, Niji Quay. Hello, my sister, or female friend, I guess. Can we get a gold star for always learning, please? Gold star for always learning. Push you. And hey, Grass Reds Indians. Well, good morning, Grass Reds. And a silver star for Grass Reds. Bonjour! And welcome back to the show. Welcome back to Bonjour, Nana Bonjour. The podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. I am Natasha. Over here, the star of the show. Oh, get out of here. Not a boujou. A good dog boujou. We need a shake. Say hello, sweetheart. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. And over here, the rock star cartoonist, the Michael Lyons. A good dog boujou, Niji. Say hello, brother. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. How you doing? Oh, not too bad. <laughs> yeah. You look great, by the way. Oh, thanks. I really like your beard. It's coming in nicely. So, um, today is Gazibiki um, Sakinake. Gazibiki Sakinake Gija Good. It is the floor washing day. Or Saturday. Huh, sweetie. <laughs> yep. Today is the sacred day to wash your floors. So we call it Missy Biggie, it's a good day, use your good, use your good day. And uh, I don't know, big old Saturday live stream, gonna talk about Ojibwe language and culture, I don't know. Um, so, what else sweetie? I don't know, did you wanna talk about uh, current events? Should we current event in it? We're current event in it sweetie. Today in current events on Bouju Nana Bouju, what's going on? Um, well, it's not really that current, but uh, there's been reports that Joe Biden has been farting a lot. Yeah, Joe Biden, poor guy. He's got the boogets. <laughs> He's got the farts. Yeah, apparently he let out a really long, loud, stinky fart in front of the queen or something. Oh, I heard last night, hey, by the way, <laughs> we had dinner with Missy, Cousin Missy, so fun, and little Avery, but uh, heard a story that, you know, friend of a friend is a friend of one of the CIA guys who, um, you know, takes care of President Biden. Yeah. And apparently they have to, like, change his bloomers all the time. You mean he actually poops himself? Uh-huh. <laughs> and what a lot of people don't know is that President Joe Biden wears bloomers. You mean like women's bloomers? Yep. <laughs> you heard it here first, fellas. No. But yeah, I guess he does have a problem with, um, you know, cutting the cheese or <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Hey, Flat Stuff Earth is here. Bouchou. Can we get a copper st star for flat stuff? No, you, that's a, a bronze star. Oh, right, bronze star. Yeah, but you can't melt down bronze and sell it like copper, can you? I think you can. <laughs> okay, copper. 
Uh, and Sagame is here. We'll push you, Sagame. Sagame is here, sweetie. Okay, Mino Giga Jabe. Good morning. Good morning. Mino Giga Jabe. Yeah, Saturday morning. It is the winter dark of late December. For the winter dark of late... Well, it's not really late December yet. It's late November. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about um, that in December. <laughs> okay. I won't recite a poem just yet. So, what do we got going on? Um, today, we've got to record our radio show. Oh, right. What are we going to do for the radio show? Well, um, I'm thinking, you know, in a couple of days, it's going to be December. Mm -hmm. We could do um, Little Spirit Moon. Oh, okay. Little Spirit Moon, what is that? Manadu Giza Soons? Manadu Giza Soons. Little Spirit Moon. That's what we call December. Okay, we'll do the radio show. Um, and then we've got to get to the bank before it closes. Does it close at like noon or something on Saturdays? I'm not sure. We'll have to look it up. But we got to deposit those checks. Yeah. Um, and we got to mail out the bills. Yep, mail out the bills. And, oh, let's not forget. What's that? Let's do a really boring um, live stream where we just talk about our bills and the minutia of our day. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Hmm. So anyway, we also got our first Christmas gift yesterday. That, that stupid Missy, she's just spoiling us. I know. Missy shows up and she's got a, uh, what do they call those? A TV? Yeah, the smart TV or whatever. Big old, the biggest TV I've ever had. Or we've ever had. And uh, we got it all set up in the living room and stuff. Um, I was thinking we could use it for a second monitor, but that thing is way too big in here. Yeah, huh? But we got a Christmas gift, and so we're, thank you, Missy, if you see this later. It's really great. Watch Spider-Man Far From Home last night. <laughs> Boy, that was stupid. Yeah, I think it's over for Spider-Man. What happened? I mean, how do you screw up a Spider-Man movie? You could just have him fighting people, swinging around, and it'd be a good movie. Instead, they turned it into like a after-school special kind of movie. They're like, oh, we're going over to wherever they went. Where's the Eiffel Tower? That's in uh, France. France. <laughs> is it? Or is it in Italy? Eiffel Tower? <laughs> I, don't, I think it's France. Well, wherever they were. But it was stupid. I was bored. But anyway, it was a great TV. <laughs> And so we should, you know, watch a movie this afternoon. Yeah, but we got to get the, the radio show done first. Yeah, for sure. We'll do that after the show. Anyway, today on the Ojibwe Word of the Day, I thought we could finally get to the bottom of Gitche Banashin. I want to talk a little today about Big Bird. Gitchi is great or big. Actually, we could have called call him a manji. Or is that how you say it? Maji. Maji banashin. But a banashin is a bird. And here we have a big bird. And a big bird <laughs> sleeps in a... With this one. A bird's nest. Yep. How come we didn't have him call in? Well, that would have been a lot funnier. And made more sense. Yeah. But instead, I just pulled up his picture. So, do you guys remember Big Bird? Big Bird lived in um, Sesame Street. Hey, you know what, sweetie? What? Let's do this. Would you mind teleporting me to Sesame Street? You want to go to Sesame Street? Yeah. We haven't been there in a long time. Oh, yeah, sure. Hang on. I'm going to go to Sesame Street and then talk about Sesame Street. Okay, hang on. Uh, let's see. One to teleport to Sesame Street. Make it so. Number one. No. Nah. Ho. 
wow. <laughs> I'm here on Sesame Street. Bloop. Okay, boujou. Hi, sweetie. Oh, good. Did you make it? Yep, I'm here in one piece. How is it? It's quiet. It's like a ghost town. Hello? Hello? Anybody? Big Bird? Mr. Hooper? Uh, Mr. Hooper has been dead for 50 years. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Um, the Count or whoever? Nobody's there, huh? No, no one's here. Weird. Do you think they all got the COVID and died? They're probably all uh, quarantining. Oh, maybe they're just quarantining. Hmm. Well, that's weird. All right, well, I'm going to talk about Sesame Street. All right, give me a call when you want me to pick you up. Okay. Roger that. Over and out. Over and out, sweetie. Boop. Okay. So, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Sesame Street. Can you tell me how to get to the place with a wagon and a was seen? Now, the thing about Sesame Street is that there's animals walking around in the streets. You got your big bird. You got your, um, what do we want to call him? Gitchy Benashin. And Big Bird is weird. He might be, um, what's the word? Not retarded. Uh, developmentally disabled. Because by my estimation, Big Bird's got to be around 57, 58 at the youngest. Because... When I was a little girl, back in the 70s, um, Big Bird, the joke was that he was huge, but he was like a little chick living in the streets with no mommy. He just lived in that big old bird's nest. What? This one? That's how I remember bird's nest. I go, uh, you know, it's a really crappy place you got to live, that nest. What? This one? It's my street nest. Anyway, so Big Bird lives in a big nest in the streets. Kind of behind like a, kind of over there somewhere. And now it's five, six decades later. And Big Bird still acts like he's five or six years old. Like he doesn't understand anything. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, they've introduced like Granny Bird. Like he's got a grandmother who's somehow still alive? Anyway, I don't trust Big Bird because he's a grown adult who acts like a little kid and surrounds himself with little kids and pretends he's dumb. It's just got, you know, that Michael Jackson vibe all over it. I don't like Big Bird. Get you, Benishin. Forget it. But you know what else is weird? Now you got an animal. Yes, I know Animal wasn't on Sesame Street. He was on The Muppet Show. And when I was a little girl, I loved The Muppet Show. Muppet Show came out when I was like a sixth grader. And so it was kind of like people, you sort of, um, you sort of graduated to the... The Muppet Show. If you grew up on Sesame Street, by the time you were too old for Big Bird, they pulled, they rolled out The Muppet Show. And The Muppet Show had a little more adult humor. You would have, you know, uh, this is, um, I guess I would call him Awasin. Because he's so wild. But actually, he's probably a human being. But they call him Animal. He's just Animal. He's got one name. He plays drums. He's, you know, tweaked out on meth. And, um, you know, he's a, I was seeing, he's a wild animal. I used to be able to do an impersonation of um, animal. Let me think if I can do it. <clears throat> Beat, drip, no. 
Beat drums. No, how's it go? Beat drums. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. Beat. No. Beat drums. Ah, animal, animal. Something like that. I'm not. I can't do impersonations. But so animal played drums and took drugs, and uh, they had to chain them up. I guess. Ew, I don't know. So that's um animal. Oh, but this the the Muppet Show then would also have like rock stars on. They'd have one non Muppet guest every week, a new person to host the show or whatever. And it would be like Alice Cooper or whoever. And uh, so I, you know, I loved it. You get to watch live music, not live music, but you could see Prince, you know, <laughs> singing with a bunch of Muppets or whatever. <laughs> So it was pretty fun, but weird. And uh, that leaves. Let me, let me move this guy out of the way. Cookie Monster. Um, Bequasia Guns. He's a cookie. I mean, he's kind of a cookie animal. So Bequasia Guns always seen, I guess. I mean, what is a monster? Um, but have you ever noticed how similar Cookie Monster and Animal sound? Cookie, again, I can't, I can't do impersonations. <clears throat> cookie, me love, no. <clears throat> me love Cookie. Let me try one more time. <clears throat> me love Cookie, me love Cookie, yeah. And then there's Animal. Yeah, beat drum, beat drum. So what is that? You know, I'm not into conspiracy theories, but what if Animal or Animal and Cookie Monster were the same guy? Have you thought about that? What does that mean? Is it just like an actor-based reality? Is nothing real? Do they just have people playing like public figures? You know, then one day it's like, oh, that, that you know, there's, there really is no animal and there really is no cookie monster. It's just an actor playing these people on the world stage. You know, sort of like, um, I mean, you name it, George Floyd, Kyle Rittenhouse. These aren't real people. Abby Putito, you know. They're actors on a world stage of fake information. Psychological warfare, man. I don't know. But these are just some of my thoughts on this gizzy biggie, sagina gay, on this floor washing day. I don't know. <laughs> no. Um, okay. Is it Biggie? Sucking a gay. Floor washing day. Or gives you good. Floor washing day. I don't know. Should I put out some tobacco or something? Hmm. Ernie! Bert! Kermit! Anybody? Weird actors who uh, are aging and dying. Like, um, what, Marie? <laughs> Gordon? Are you guys still on the show? I don't know where they went. Bloop. Okay, boujou. Hi, sweetie. Well, hi, Natasha. You all done there? Yeah, I think so. You want to come home? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to scan for your coordinates. And then I'm going to lock on your coordinates. Okay. And then I'll te teleport you home. <laughs> okay. One to teleport. Make it so, number one. No. Hey, welcome back. Thank you, sweetie. How was it over there? I don't know. Creepy. Everything's so creepy to me now. Yeah, I know. 
<laughs> anyway, did you want to get up here? Yeah, sure. All right, you guys. I'm going to turn the microphone over to Ace Fraley. Shock me. Dinner now. No. Um, I'm going to turn the show over to the star of the show. Not a bushu. But first, um, let's make the transition with a song. Bushu Nana Bushu will return after this message. These messages. After this song, I guess. song yeah welcome to buju nana buju welcome to buju nana buju trojanium briella trojanium briella i'm guessing briella is a that must be a girl's name briella yeah sounds like a girl's name Tro, trojanium buju welcome to the show says i'm testing a new element combo with a Bromine touch. Bromine touch. I found out titanium was named after a titan. Titanium, named after titan. Oh, that's cool. What's the rest of the message mean? Uh, no idea. <laughs> Dr. Evils is here, though. Hey, Dr. Evils, boo <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Good morning. Dr. Evils, red monster. Uh, let's go back. Uh, oh, I am. I'm way off. Uh, la, la. Dr. Evil says the street was closed because of diverticultus. 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 They diverted the. Uh, nobody can get into Sesame Street. It's been uh, diverted. Oh, no. Yikes. Dr. Vales Evil says Poppy Street was a bad name of choice. Poppy Street. You're right. That's weird. Sesame Street. Why? Because the sesame seed and the poppy seed and then opium. I don't know. Everything's been so corrupted that it's, you know, I don't even trust Sesame Street. Well, the problem is everything's become woke. <laughs> yeah. You know, I see they pulled out that Santa Claus is gay. <laughs> yeah. You guys see that commercial? I haven't even seen the commercial. I just heard the outrage that Santa somehow ends up kissing a dude. It's like, you think I ruined Christmas by telling kids that Santa Claus is fake and their parents are liars? 
Well, there you go. Now he's gay. Merry Christmas. <laughs> you know. I never used to be homophobic until like 2020. And now I truly fear the homos. It's like, what are you doing? Why does everything, every day, got to be a new gay thing? <laughs> Nobody cares, but just leave us alone. Why MCA? It's fun to stay at the Y M C. Did you know that, sweetie? I heard that it was fun to stay at the Y M C A. Mm -hmm. You can be there to do. I don't know. Grasser says, "Big Bird's burnt out." Yeah, I think he really is. I got a new actor playing Big Bird. He sounds weird now, too. Hey, Big Bird. Hey, sweetie, you want to take a phone call? Oh, sure. I'll take a call. On line two? On line two. Hello, caller. Welcome back to the Buju Nana Buju podcast. You're on the air. You have insulted me for the last time, you little pig. When I get my hands on you, I am going to wring your little pig neck. Um, excuse me? Wait, who is this? Uh, you've reached the Buju Nana Buju podcast. I'm Nana Buju. Can I help you, uh, Alec Baldwin? Oh, this is Nana Buju? Yeah, welcome back to the show. Oh, I thought I was talking to my daughter. She's a little pig, and I'm going to wring her neck and straighten her out. <laughs> yeah, I heard you were going to do that. Did you ever do that? I went to her place, and she wasn't even there. And I got to tell you, if I see her, I'm going to shoot her in the face. Uh, take it easy. You're already in enough trouble. Oh, that's right. What is the latest on that? Are you going to jail or what? I don't think so. But I do think we're going to lock up that gun. I've been telling people for years, guns kill. And now look what happened. I will not rest until that gun is behind bars. And until we put all guns behind bars. <laughs> okay, good luck with that. So how's everything else going in your terrible life? Uh, uh, you know, my wife is from Spain. Well, no, she's not. I know she said she was, and she fakes an accent, but, you know. All right. Hey, what's the Ojibwe word of the day? Take it easy. Uh, today we're talking about uh, domestic animals and wild animals. Domestic animal is a uh, awakan. Awakan. Awakan is a domestic animal. You mean kind of like my daughter, who's a little pig? <laughs> are pigs domestic? Well, they're not wild. Oh, yeah, I guess not. Well, there are wild pigs. We would call those I was seen. I was seen a wild animal. You know, I can be a wild animal myself. Well, you can be a murderous animal, I guess. You have insulted me. For the last time, Nana Buju. Yeah, why do you even call in? We do nothing but make fun of you. Well, I love your show. And I think that Michael Lyons can really play the guitar well. Hey, Alec Baldwin likes your guitar playing. Thanks, Alec. Michael says thanks. Yes, but you tell Michael, when I see him, I am going to straighten his little ass out. No, again, you're thinking of your daughter. Oh, that's right. Uh, you okay? Nah, I need my meds. Yeah, go take your meds. I got a show to do. All right. Hey, Nana Buju. <laughs> yes, what? How do you say I will see you again in a chip way? We say, Gigawaba Min, Minowa. Well, Gigawaba Min, Minowa. See you again. <laughs> okay. See you later, Alec. Yeesh. 
He scares me. I know. He's un unhinged. He always has been. But I don't know. I don't think being a political millionaire is all it's cracked up to be. I know. It hasn't brought him happiness. He got, you know, he got the wife, the young, you know, <laughs> Spanish wife. And he got a million bucks, became famous, got to be in a couple of movies, got to be on TV, got to be on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Would you be on Saturday Night Live if you could? <laughs> Absolutely not. That's a, that is the opposite of funny. Yeah, isn't that weird too? When I was a kid, Saturday Night Live used to be a comedy show. And, you know, you can't. It's painfully unfunny. But anyway, so he was on there for four years playing Trump. And in the end, he's a uh, broken, you know, accidentally killed a lady, allegedly, on a B-movie about the Old West that nobody ever would have seen anyway. I mean, nothing worked out for that guy. He should have stayed in sales. He should have just tried, you know, ABC, always be closing. Always be closing, Alec Baldwin. That's all we're saying. I don't know. I feel bad. Yeah. So are you guys. You know. Hey, sweetie. Yeah? Want to take a call? Oh, another one? Sure. Caller, welcome back to the Buju Nana Buju podcast. You're on the air. Can I help you? <laughs> Hello, Kamala. <laughs> Cut her off, will you? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Vice President Kamala Harris. <laughs> you don't like her, do you? I won't suffer fools, sweetie. What? She just thinks it's funny. She thinks what's funny? Why can't she stop laughing? I don't know. She thinks it's funny. That's your next president, by the way. Before you guys start laughing, with the, quit smiling. <laughs> what? You guys, this is serious. You know, we all, oh, sure. Joe Biden just happens to have dementia and is pooping his pants on the daily. And you, you're thinking, well, okay. Well, maybe next election. It's not going to be any next election. Biden's going to die, and that lady is going to be our president. She's going to cackle us in over, over the edge. It's all going to crap, sweetie. <laughs> what are you talking about? I have no idea. The world's ending. It's the apocalypse, man. No, it's not. Nah, it probably isn't. They've been telling me the world's ending since I was a kid. Hey, quit using that hairspray. Don't you want to save the ozone layer? You crazy kids. The globe is cooling. It's going to be a new ice age. Yeah, just wait till you grow up when that new ice age is everywhere. That's an inconvenient truth. Two weeks later. Are you crazy kids? Don't you know you're uh, destroying the ozone layer? That's going to cause global warming. What now? I thought it was global cooling. No, now it's global warming. It's not funny. Polar bears are dying. It's inconvenient. Truth. So what are you, you going to do after the world burns up? After global warming kills us all? Yeah. I don't know. Fly around as an angel. You would be an angel. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> I don't know. Are you crabby? A little bit. Why? Don't know. I think Sesame Street set me off. No, you know what it was? It's actually Alec Baldwin and Kamala, Kamala. What is her name? It's Kamala. Kamala. It's not Kamala. It's sometimes Kamala. I couldn't believe I didn't know what the vice president's name was this morning. When we were setting this up, I was like, yeah, we'll get, um, you know, what's her name? 
I was like, uh, and I couldn't remember her name. I'm like, what country do I live in? I don't even remember the name of the vice president. Do you remember the name of the last vice president? Mike Pence. Yeah, very good. Mike Pence. And there's a vice president you could, uh, I don't know. He looked like a president. You know, gray hair. Chiseled features. Kept his big mouth shut. Didn't just carry on laughing whenever. I don't know anything about Mike Pence except this one thing. And now that I'm old and crotchety and conservative, I like it. Mike Pence wouldn't have dinner with a woman alone. And he wouldn't he would never be alone with any woman other than his wife. Oh yeah, I remember that. And like the left went after him at being a big sexist. Yeah. They're all like, What? You don't trust yourself, you pervert, to be alone with a woman? What century is this? And he's like, No, no, I think it's inappropriate. I'm a married man. Uh you know. Old fashioned values. He wasn't saying, Oh, you know, I can't I can't, you know. Keep my hands off of, I can't snoozle and sniff their hair if I'm alone, you know. Uh, Mike Pence, you know, is this is an old, loyal husband. Old-fashioned family values. You guys should be more like Mike Pence. Is that his name? I think so. Mike Pence. Hello, I'm Michael Pence. I am the vice president of... The most, I'm going to say most popular president ever, because even people hated him, talked about him nonstop. The most widely popular president, the most famous president I ever had. Uh, he was second in command, and he didn't say a thing. He just, you know, hid in the shadows of Trump. How come he didn't run for president? Well, he, he, <laughs> Trump ran for president and lost. Oh, that's right. You could have ran against Trump. <laughs> you think that would have worked? Probably not. Anyway. I don't know, sweetie. Dr. Evil says, Animal had six months of sobriety. Is that right? I'm sure he'll be coming out as trans soon enough. My dog is getting scared. <laughs> Dr. Evil's dog is scared. Do you think Dr. Evil has an evil dog? Yeah. The dogs are the only... You know how they had that movie that said uh, all dogs go to heaven? Yeah. Well, I think dogs are the only animals that go to hell. What do you mean? Well, you know, most animals, you know, they can't do anything evil. You know, you never hear of a, a bad deer or a bad... Uh, cow. You know, they just live their lives being perfectly the animals that they are. But a dog, sometimes people say, hey, bad dog. There are certain dogs who are bad. You know, like those German shepherds in the 60s who the cops had barking at the civil rights guys. Yeah, when they had the, <laughs> the, the fire hoses. Yeah, when they hose down the civil war or civil rights protesters with hoses. Why are you laughing at that? I didn't mean to laugh. Natasha thinks it's funny that uh, civil rights protesters got hosed by the fire department, I guess. It wasn't the police? No, I don't think the police know how to work those. I think the fire department was even after the civil war rights guys. But anyway, those dogs, those German shepherds, or even Hitler. Hitler had a bad dog. Why was Hitler's dog bad? Because he was racist. He was a Nazi dog. Another German shepherd. Was he? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe dogs don't go to hell. I I can't say for sure, sweetie. And, and it's not for me to say. Yeah, huh? Do you guys think dogs go to hell? <laughs> what am I talking about, sweetie? I don't know. I got to see what the Boozer crew's up to. It's more important to know the name of your police chief. Yeah, no kidding, huh? Trojanium Briella uh, is talking about 
the local politics. That's that's more important. I have no idea who the police chief is. I got a cousin who's a cop in Bemidji, though. Hey, Chad. But um, that's the only cop I know. My cousin Tommy used to be a cop. Yep. Oh, the police are so racist in Bemidji. Yeah, what about my cousin Tom? He was like second in command, Indian guy. He was the worst one. <laughs> okay. Getting jiggy with it, says System of a Control. Bujo is System of a Control. Never heard of Mad Cow? Oh, that's right. Remember Mad Cow Disease, sweetie? Yeah, those guys were cow cannibals. Cow cannibals. Whatever happened to Mad Cow Disease? I don't know. I think they cured it. They probably had a vaccination. Yeah. Where was the mad cow disease fac- vaccination? And I was going to kill everybody. Uh, Zagame says, not a buju, not knowing the cops is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I guess that is true. <laughs> Zagame says, not knowing the cops is a good thing. Yeah, I got friends who know the whole staff at the jail. <laughs> like, oh, welcome back. Yeah. You know you're a bad kid when the judge remembers you. <laughs> System of a Control says cats are aware of God's existence. Is that right? Cats know that people act as middlemen to God's will. They're not ungrateful. They just know better. February 16th, 2017. Hmm. Cats are aware of God's existence. They do seem to know something. You know, sometimes I think dogs can see spirits too. You ever see that where there's like a a dog barking at absolutely nothing? And you're like, what are you doing? He's barking into air. Then you go, are you looking at grandpa? (laughs) You know, is the spirit of grandpa here? And you're barking at him, let you out. But yeah, mad cows, they might go to hell. So... What can we say? Awakan is a domestic animal. These are like your... Uh, okay, here's the here's the Ojibwe language and general education for children section of the show. <laughs> okay. We're going to start labeling these things. Time now for Nanabujus teaching the kids. Awakan is a domestic animal. That means an animal who can be like a pet or a farm animal, which technically you can make farm animals your pets. Some people have pigs for pets. Um, some people even have cows for pets. You know, they're so cute when they're little. But so technically, I think a farm animal is domesticated. You know, they get fed by human beings. They live. They're domicile. That must be what domestic means, huh? Yeah, they're domicile. They're not wild. So they're they're gentle for the most part. Um and then there's the animals who live out in the woods. I was seen. A wild animal. And today I would like to tell a story of Anamosh Dash Maingan of dog and wolf. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not going to do that. Um, so a dog is a domesticated wolf. It's the cousins to a wolf. Back in the days of the grandfathers, there were only wolves. And they ran in packs. And there was always an alpha leader. And, you know, strict codes of behavior. But then one day, one of them wolves... Like, you know, they were creeping up to the uh, Anishinaabe village. The wolves looking at, oh, there's the human beings. Well, don't let them see you. Let's just keep going. We're, there's nothing here for us. But this one wolf, uh, let's call him Anamosh. <laughs> he was interested in them humans. And he went down there. He thought, you know what? Uh, I've been watching these humans and how they act when they see us. They get scared. They run away sometimes. 
You see what a big old furry animal with big teeth living in the woods, running fast, killing deer, killing rabbits. The Anishinaabe were afraid of the Mayingan. Yeah, now everyone's like, oh yeah, the wolf is our brother. Well, back in the day, not so much. But then one of those wolves came down. Actually, that's backwards, isn't it? Kind of. Um, let's say one of the Anishinaabe, the human beings, a young boy, went up to the wolf and they became friends. And he said, you know what? You can live with us. I'm going to name you Snoopy. And uh, as long as you don't eat, bite us, growl at us, whatever, you can share our food. In fact, you know what? I'm going to treat you like a brother. I want you to come sleep indoors with us. I'm going to call you Anamosh. And that was the first wolf to become friends with the, uh, and eventually the, that wolf became a family member to the human beings. And they called him Anamosh, or dog. So dogs are the cousins now. And then as the years went by, this is what a lot of people forget. As the years went by, that wolf uh, gave puppies, and each generation the, the wolf puppies would get a little cuter. They wouldn't grow so big. Their teeth got a little less pointy. Um, sometimes their hair got real short. Sometimes they would develop, you know, big eyes, little, you know, bouncy dispositions, their bark. They, they stopped howling at the moon, and they started to yip. Yip, 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 you know. And this is how the chihuahua was created. But eventually, dogs are basically just wolves who have made themselves cute and likable enough so the human beings would feed them and treat them like family. That's the difference between Awakan and Awasin. Now cats, Gajagains, cats. Cats are different. You see, the uh, human being actually had to go out and meet the wolf. They say human beings domesticated the wolf. But the cat, Gajagains, she domesticated herself. A cat is always just barely domestic. Uh, as soon as a mouse comes in your house, your cat turns right back into an awasin, a wild animal. Um, dogs will pretend to be hunting. You know, you can throw a stick and they'll run, get it, bring it back to you. Oh, look at me, we're hunting birds, I guess. You know, they're just being friendly and playful. Cat doesn't know. Cat just turns back into a lion when there's, you know, even a laser pointer. You know, they'll turn right back into their, you know, they never quite stop being a wild animal. That's what I like about cats. Because if you kind of learn the cats, uh, you know, what they'll take and what they'll give, you know, you meet a cat on their terms and you start a relationship with them they will be domesticated they won't scratch you they won't bite you they'll be happy to see you they'll bond with you like uh you know your little kitty they'll purr when you pick them up they get that makes them so happy to have somebody that depends though some cats don't like to be touched i call those cats uh I don't know. Princess didn't like to be touched much. She liked to be brushed. <laughs> but, but Bagheera, he would just, like, I think if Bagheera, you know, became paralyzed and I had to carry him around everywhere, <laughs> yeah, he'd be fine with that. I don't think he'd miss running around. He loves to be carried. I think he prefers it because I can't just, you know, walk around. I can't take my cat on a walk. Got to pick him up and carry him around. It's like my baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a basic difference. A domicile animal and a wild animal man. What's your favorite animal, sweetie? My favorite animal is probably, um, I guess a cat. 
Just because you've known him personally? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I suppose. My favorite animals have always been cats. And I've, I've, I've liked a couple of dogs. But I have to say, I probably don't really like dogs. You don't like dogs? Well, I don't like other people's dogs. I don't like things that bark at me when I come up to the door and have to be chained to something or they'll try to kill you. That's what I never understood about dog lovers. I know. Everybody secretly hates your dog. Yeah. Okay, here's one. I'm just going to turn the light on. You know how I, once in a while you have your friends over and you think, oh, this will be fine. I'm going to let the dog out of the back room. You can just run around and say hello to the people. And the people are like, hey, is that your dog, that German Shepherd, sniffing at my crotch? And you go, yeah. Oh, don't worry. His bark is worse than his bite. And then he comes walking around the room and like his tail be smacking into your knees and whatever. And everybody kind of gives him a little, hey there, pooch. And then tries to get away. That's because we, we hate your dog, but now we kind of hate you. Put your dog back in the back room. I didn't come here to get my crotch sniffed, uh, jumped on. I didn't come here to uh, leave smelling like wet dog, which, by the way, your everything in your house smells like. You are so crabby. So crabby right now. If I see your dog again, guess who's calling the pound? <laughs> Sweetie, don't say that. I don't know what I'm mad at. You know who really gets my goat? Trojanium Briella. Sneaky as a cat is a terrific tune done by David Benoit. Sneaky as a cat, sweetie. Let's look it up. Okay. I'm not really mad at Trojanium Briella. My neighbor went to Ojibwe language class. Always laying language on me. Yeah, isn't that annoying? <laughs> um... I had a buddy who, uh, this is what really annoyed me. No, you're not a fluent speaker, but I knew a guy who spoke a lot of Ojibwe. And he learned it out in uh, kind of Fond du Lac territory. He's from Duluth. And I'd come up to him and I'd be like, hey, Boujou. And he'd go, Boujou. That's what he said. He goes, no, no, no. It's pronounced Boujou. Yeah, well. In my town, we say boujou. And, by the way, quit correcting my Ojibwe. I'm your elder. I'll butcher the language if I want. But like a new Ojibwe teacher or speaker, you know, they're looking for it. That's what's so annoying about this show, too. <laughs> Do you think this show is annoying? So annoying. What time is it? I can't wait to get off. Um, but like when, people, when, I, when I spell something wrong, no, quick to, hey, you spelled that wrong. Where's the Z and Giza good? You know, easy. I don't care. <laughs> but they know a little bit, so they want to. It's just like culture cops when they've heard one thing. Oh, you know, a woman's never supposed to sit at the drum. And so they're just looking around to catch somebody sitting at the drum. It's pronounced Trojan E Umbrella. Oh, okay. Trojan E umbrella. Not Briella. Trojan E umbrella. Trojan E umbrella. Trojan E umbrella. Uh, I do have a goat almost as big as your Paul Stanley doll. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> My brother brought a goat home once. He was a DJ. And somehow, in the course of his job, Announcing country tunes, you know, KKBJ, double K country, 1360 on your AM dial, you know, whatever it was. I think it was that, actually. Somebody left a goat at the uh, radio station. So he comes home, and my brother I was like 18, 19 at the time, with a goat. Ties it up in the front yard. And goes, it's like, what? Now we have a pet goat? I don't know what he did with that goat. He didn't kill him, did he? I hope not. But I don't really care. 
Vincent Van Goat. <laughs> Zagame says Vincent Van Goat. That's where a goat ate off Vincent's ear. Spell checkers are the worst. Yes, thank you. I'm 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 such a bad speller, but I'm glad. Why are you glad? Because spelling is a spell. You know? It's just like cursive is a curse. They're putting a curse on your mind. When you write in cursive, you're cursed. And when you spell, it's a spell. And so you're under a, a hypnotic spell, sweetie. Yeah. So. I also have like a stroke brain. There are certain things I just can't remember ever. Like how many C's are in the word concern? I always spell that wrong and I never learn. C-O-N-C-E-R-N? C-O-N-S-E-R-N. Beats me. But that's the beauty of a jib boy too though. Because if you spell it wrong, you'll say, you can say, hey, we never had a written language. So I'm spelling this, you know, the way it sounds to my ear. It's like, yeah, that's that's a good way to go. Oh, the v double vowel system will make it easier. <laughs> you think so? La la la. Are they inside dogs? Nagame? I don't know what Grassroots is talking about. I don't know either, sweetie. Kind of feel like I ran out of stuff to talk about today, sweetie. Really? Yeah. Do you want to call it a show? I don't know. Kind of feel like we should talk about something. How long have we been on? Um, it's not saying. Are we still on? <laughs> the outfit says it's an ex excellent condition. Hold on a sec. This really is a boring live stream, huh? Yeah. It's weird. It's it's. You know what I think it is? What? I think it's because you started the show. You think because I started the show and made it weird? Uh, Trojan Umbrella says it's been 56 minutes. So it's almost an hour. Why don't you talk about the books in the show and then we'll just call it a show? Okay. Well, folks... I, uh, I'm fresh out of anything relevant to say. I don't know. But I sure do appreciate you people showing up. Uh, so, Buju Nana Buju is a podcast that we started. Actually, we started the show about four years ago. But in the last, it'll be almost a year. At the end of the year, on New Year's Eve, it'll be one year of doing live stream podcasts. Yeah, that's right. We've been doing this for 11 months. Yeah. So, uh, last January 1st, we started a, uh, doing a one-hour live stream podcast. For the previous three years, we were putting out little 10, 15-minute Ojibwe words of the day and sharing them around on Facebook and YouTube and that. And they were always, like, pre-taped so we could think up jokes beforehand. But then we thought, you know what? I kind of... I kind of want to do this live. I don't know why. Because then we get to see people who watch the videos and they get to call, whatever. So it's been just cool. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure you feel this way too. What's that? I kind of feel like all my childhood dreams came true with this show. Yeah, same here. You know, we get to share cartoons. We get to share music. We get to tell jokes, clown around, be creative, be funny. And it's been so much fun. And along the way, we've grown slowly, slowly, and but steadily. Every day, we get two or three new subscribers. Until, and this is really impressive with people who don't understand YouTube, we've got over 2,500 subscribers. You know, the first time I ever saw Kiss in concert, there was only 2,000 people in the audience. And it seemed like a lot of people. And part of me kind of goes, oh, that's cool. I got as many viewers now as we're at that KISS concert. But then 
if you look at other YouTube videos and you know average person's got like 10 20,000 views 50,000 views a million views and then you look at ours and hey we got 56 views today that's pretty good oh wow look at that 10 people showed up on the live stream we're famous <laughs> yeah <clears throat> And that's what it feels like. I feel like I'm famous. But our show is a joke compared to, you know, real YouTube channels. But the youth, the live, it being on live and having people actually sit with us and have some coffee first thing in the morning makes me feel like I'm famous. And, and then this is what I'm talking about. Miigwech, Zagame. Zagame just gave us $5 uh, chat. Thanks, Sagame, Miigwech. You're the best. Um, and then along the way, you know, like uh, we get tips here and there. People are signing up on Patreon. We have people who give us a little bit of money every month to keep us going. We've also got a PayPal. Sometimes people will send, uh, you know, some money, just one-time shot. And we're raising money on a GoFundMe a campaign to raise up to $8,000. Uh, and then Michael, the rock star cartoonist, he's got books in Ojibwe language for sale at Amazon. And it's all, you can click it, click in the links in the description. Uh, why am I talking about this? Just tell them how much you love the show. Yeah, even though I'm all crabby and stuff, when I really think about it, I just, I love doing this. I love it that people show up. We got this little, little community. And, uh, I don't know. It's fun. Yeah. So I want to say chi miigwech to everyone who supports us. Uh, it actually means more than you probably think. To one skinny uh, starving artist. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You're talking about Michael. I'm looking at you, man. What? Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Lyons. He appreciates you too, but he's too proud. You're too proud to gush her like me, huh? I'm not proud. You're proud. Anishinaabe. Proud. In the name of love. What's more in the name of love? Hey, we didn't play a song, did we? Well, we um, we had that welcome song. Oh, yeah. Should I end the, so the show with another song or something? You could just play the uh, la la la. We don't have anything. No, nope, I think we're done. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Miigwech. Ganawabi egg. Thank you for watching. Buju Nana Buju. A podcast about Ojibwe language and culture, huh, sweetie? You got it. Uh, I am Nana Buju. This is Natasha. Miigwech! Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow. And uh, this is Michael Lyons. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. And I will see you again. Kiko up in. Manawa. Awa. Hey, sweetie, you want to teleport me? You got it. I <laughs> wanted to teleport. Make it so, number one. Teleporting. <laughs> it's not working. Yeah, remember you got to wiggle that little wire? Wiggle the wire and push the button. Yeah, at the same time. Oh, there it goes.